Hey guys, I'm on my phone because this is just a really impromptu video and I just wanted to get it up on my YouTube just in case you don't realize about, in case you don't know about this resource. Okay, so I watched that catechism video by Father Shannon Collins, I think. Um, it's on Census Fidelium, I'll put it down below. And it talked about the catechism and it talked about the heresies found in the new catechism from the Dutch. Anyway. Long story short, that video suggested a catechism and a Bible. The Bible was a Dewey Reams, so if you want to go to a very traditional Bible, the reason the Dewey Reams is such an amazing resource is because when St. Jerome um, translated the Bible into the Vulgate, which is the Latin Bible, um, you know, obviously St. Jerome was a very studious person of biblical text. They trusted him to translate the entire Bible into Latin. He did so. So the Dewey Reams is actually translated off of the Vulgate. So you're getting the most precise language. And man, when it comes to the Holy Scripture, those different words really can make a difference in, in understanding what we're supposed to be getting from um, sacred scripture. So, you got, I'm just like, I just am so shocked at how lacking my catechesis was. And I mean, I'm not trying to blame anybody and who knows, maybe I was supposed to have a really lacking catechesis so that I got, I'm so upset at this point when I'm at 35 years old, but I am going to read to you from this. It's going to take me two minutes to cover the prim preliminary lesson in this book. And if you are a Catholic who was raised in the nineties and eighties, then perhaps you don't even know the answers to this preliminary lesson. This is the Catechism of St. Pope Pius, of St. Pius X. He was a pope in the 18, in 1880. They realized, he realized that they needed to make a catechism for the lay person, for children, for, this is, it's just very small and it's question and answer. And, you know, we just, we needed to know our faith because what happened was, it was really passed down orally. People would memorize through. Some days they said it was set with song. There's a great introduction in this um, book. It's written, uh, it's by Eterna Press. I'm probably butchering that. I'll put it in my store, of course, and I'll just put it down below as well. But it was like seven bucks. Anyway, it's I'm just like all flummoxed because I just went, anyway, I'm just flummoxed today or whatever, however you say it. I'm not even saying that right. Anyway. So I, what I want to do is I'm going to read this to you and I'm just, he, once he became Pope, he set up, set out to make this book, just something that every single Catholic in the world could use, could understand from because, um, you know, Martin Luther with all his heresies, he was putting out these catechesis you know, about what scripture, only scripture, Bible alone, whatever it is. And so the Catholic Church realized that they needed, they needed to use a printing press and create something. So anyway, this is what was created. The Council of Trent, that catechism is amazing, but it is for priests. This is for the layperson. This is meant for children and adults and just the, it's basic, but it's important. So I'm literally going to read this to you guys. Now, just the preliminary lesson, it's three pages, not even. And if you don't know all this, then go get this and start studying. Okay. One, are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian by the grace of God. Why do you say by the grace of God? I say by the grace of God, because to be a Christian is a perfectly gratuitous gift of God, which we ourselves could not have merited. Right? Did you guys know that? Do you understand what grace is? Do you understand that it's only a gift from God that you even are a Catholic? There are so many people out there who don't have that gift for whatever reason that we don't understand. You know, our family members who've left the church, like, why don't they have that grace? We don't, God gave it to us. So we need to thank him for it daily. Who is a true Christian? A true Christian is he who is baptized, who believes and professes the Christian doctrine and obeys the lawful pastors of the church. What is Christian doctrine? Christian doctrine is the doctrine which Jesus Christ, our Lord, taught us to show us the way of salvation. Is it necessary to learn the doctrine taught by Jesus Christ? 
it, it, it certainly is necessary to learn the doctrine taught by Jesus Christ, and those who fail to do so are guilty of a grave breach of duty. So, being a lawyer, breach of duty is kind of a big thing. You guys, you know, we get we have this gift of faith. We're Christians. We're Catholics. We must know our faith. How in the world are we going to share this knowledge? How are we going to pass it on our children? How are we going to help the church move back towards truth, move back towards reverence if we don't know our faith? Are parents and guardians bound to send their children and those dependents on them to catechism? Parents and guardians are bound to see that their children and dependents learn Christian doctrine, and they are guilty before God if they neglect this duty. This isn't saying the priest is bound to teach catechism to your kids. This isn't saying religious ed is even bound or RCA or any of that. You as a parent are bound to teach your child catechesis. So if you don't know this stuff, go get a book and get something classic like this. Don't just get something that's going to be orthodox. From who are we to receive and learn Christian doc doctrine? We are to receive and learn Christian doctrine from the Holy Catholic Church. How are we certain that the Christian doctrine which we receive from the Holy Catholic Church is really true? We are certain that the doctrine which we receive from the Holy Catholic Church is true because Jesus Christ, the divine author of this doctrine, committed it through his apostles to the church, which he founded and made the infallible teacher of all men, promising her his divine assistance until the end of time. Are there other proof, proofs of the truth of Christian doctrine? The truth of Christian doctrine is also shown by the eminent sanctity of the number who have professed it and who still profess it, by the heroic fortitude of the martyrs, by its marvelous and rapid propagation in the world, and by its perfect preservation throughout so many centuries of ceaseless and varied struggles. What and how many are the principal and most necessary parts of Christian doctrine? The principal and most necessary parts of Christian doctrine are four, the creed, the Our Father, the commandments, and the sacraments. Okay, do you know your Apostles' Creed? Do you know your Our Father? I mean, those should be easy, but maybe if you're not praying the rosary, maybe you don't know your Apostles' Creed. I didn't until I started praying the rosary daily. The commandments, can you name the commandments? I can't. I'm just being really honest with you. I cannot name the commandments. I don't have them memorized. I was never asked to memorize them for you know, First Communion. It used to be my dad, was, when he was going through First Communion, they had a, the Baltimore Catechism, the original that I talked about in my other video, and they had to know answers. They had to memorize these things. Um, and then the sacraments. Can you name the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church? That should be very easy. That should be very easy. You walk through the life of a Catholic. Baptism, reconciliation, First Communion, marriage, holy orders, knowing the sick, in confirmation, I'm sorry, I forgot that. But just walk through the life of a Catholic. Confirmation obviously goes in there before marriage. Um, and you got them. So there you go. Okay. What does the creed teach us? The creed teaches us the principal article, articles of our holy faith. What does the Our Father teach us? The Our Father teaches us all that we are to hope from God. And all we are to ask of him, right? Jesus said, this is how you pray to your father. He didn't say go chit chat with him. You can do that. But he said, this is how you should pray. Our father, Abba, right? Abba, we love our father. We're not saying this rote thing to like this scary tyrannical God. We are calling him Abba. He is our tender, loving father. And so when you say that our father, say it in that way. Our father, Abba, who art in heaven. I've started doing that. It's made such a difference. What do the commandments teach us? The commandments teach us all that we are to do to please God, all of which is summed up in loving God above all things and our neighbor as ourselves for the love of God. What does the doctrine of the sacraments teach us? The doctrine of the sacraments shows us the nature and right use of those means which Jesus Christ has instituted to remit our sins give us his grace, infuse into and increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And that's it. And then the next section is the Apostles' Creed. Get this book, 799. You could read this. It's just question and answer. It reads so fast, but you will learn so much. You will learn so much. The catechism, the one we have now, 
I'm not saying it's a bad catechism. I don't know enough to even say that, but it's long and wordy and it takes you a whole year of really like really diving in there to get it. And sometimes it's like way over my head and it's amazing that it quotes saints and it quotes scripture and I love it. But if you are not formed or if you are a teenager, if you are a child, if you can read, go get yourself a catechism of St. Pius X and just read it because you will have the basic faith just down. And then from there, you can go read saints. You can go read commentary and you will have that basic understanding of our faith, that deposit of truth in your heart and in your brain so that you can run everything else you see by that. So I'm going to get off my soapbox, but you guys, I wish we could just say that everybody who's talking about the Catholic church today is orthodox and understands what they're doing, but it is clear. I mean, father Martin, right? It is clear. I think that's his name, but it is clear that even our shepherds or some of them are in wolf's clothes. And is unless we know the faith, how are we even to know what is right and wrong? I have people telling me contraception is okay or that gay marriage is going to be okay by the church. No, it's not. No, it's not. And there's a reason for it. But again, if you don't know the whys and you just want the church, you know, I had a homily today and it said that as a Catholic, it was, it was linking the, I'm not going to go into his homily, but it was good. And he was saying that, you know, is the world influencing the church or is the church influencing the world? And we have to influence the world. But how do we do that if we don't even know what we are supposed to be emanating, what we are supposed to be calling others to? So, all right, that's it, guys. God bless. Have a very beautiful day. $7.99. Go get yourself a copy. Amazon Prime, two days, sit down, read it over the course of, I don't know, a week and see what kind of Catholic you come out on the other side and the way you can form your children, the way you can form other children if you end up being an art religious education teacher, which is a whole other topic. But all right, guys, God bless. Know God, love God, do God's will. Go to mass, pray your rosary, do all that stuff. God bless. Love you. And adoration. <laughs> Bye.